Hey guys, welcome to the Ethernet Blueprint channel. My name is Tim Tritch, and on this channel, we focus on helping people just like you build in a great network into your new construction home. Please consider liking or following us so we can continue to make great content for you in hopes that it helps you with your new construction project. Today's video is really a continuation of the VLAN video. So if you haven't watched that yet, guys, go ahead and click on the link in the corner of your screen and it will take you to it. I had to break it up into two different parts because it was just gonna be too long if I didn't. So this video, we are gonna be conquering the firewall rules. We're gonna take the network that we built and all the VLANs and all the Wi-Fi, and we're gonna secure it so we can make it so we have trusted networks and non-trusted networks. Hopefully you'll be able to take that content and reflect it in your own personal build, your own personal situation, and your own personal needs. This is just a network outline that basically we see all the time and we build all the time for our customers. So I hope that you'll be able to take what we show you here and apply it to your own personal build. So let's get started. Okay, guys. So we're going to go ahead and kind of continue here with our firewall rules. So a couple things I want to kind of point out earlier in the video, we talked about there are really two big reasons why we want to create VLANs. One is for security, which we're going to work on now. The second reason is just to kind of keep your traffic running a little bit more smooth to basically be able to isolate certain traffic, sort of isolate it so that IoT devices kind of stay in their highway. Your main network stays on its lane. Kids network stays in its lane. So when he's gaming, he's not affecting the traffic over here. Um, and they're not, it makes the network run a little bit cleaner. If that's what your interest is, guys, you can stop right now all, by just creating VLANs. You're good to go. There's no security in place, but you actually, your network will just in general run cleaner because stuff will stay in its own lane, which is great. However, if you're interested in security, that piece, and you want to lock down the IoT network and make it your network run, um, be safer, um, then guys, listen up because here's what we're going to do. So by default, all VLANs can talk to each other with Ubiquity. That's just how they do them. So when you create multiple VLANs, they can all talk to each other, okay? With the exception of guest network. When I say that, leave the guest out of it because guest has its own lockdown rules that are built in. So right now, as it stands, IoT can talk to default and kids. Default can talk to IoT and kids. Everything can talk to everything, okay? That's just how it works right now. And I'll prove it by doing a little bit of pinging. So my IP address is 1.37 and I can ping 3.29, which is my desktop PC. If I connect to my desktop PC, I can ping 1.37. So I can come in here, I know it's kind of small, but I can say ping 192.168.1.37 and I can communicate with that just fine. So IoT can talk with me right now as it stands. There's nothing locked down with any of this situation, okay guys? All right, so we're going to create some firewall rules to, in essence, break that or secure our network, and that way we can prove it out at the end. At the end, my laptop should be able to ping both the desktop PC and the basement on the IoT network, but this basement PT PC should not be able to ping me back. It should not be able to communicate back. It should only have access to the Internet. Okay, so kind of a cool deal. All right, so let's get started. So we're going to go over in our settings and we're going to be creating some firewall rules. So we'll actually go into firewall and security here. All right. And we're going to create some rules. Now, there are a couple different things in here, a couple different categories. So there's internet rules, which basically protects your network from outside. You can create rules that allow stuff in from the internet. If you've ever done any port forwarding, things like that, you're allowing certain traffic on certain ports to communicate from outside the internet to your house. So that's kind of where port forwarding comes into play. Okay. Then we have LAN rules, which is our local network. Anything that's a private, local, all your VLANs, all your main networks, anything, all your devices are connected to locally in your house is your LAN, your local area network. It's all internal to your house, specific to your house. Your neighbor has its own LAN and, they, and that neighbor, he has his own LAN. Okay. So this is your LAN, traffic rules, on your LAN. So each each VLAN is part of your LAN, which VLAN, virtual LAN. And so basically what we're going to do is we're going to create rules that allow these internal uh, networks to be able to talk or not talk to each other. Guest rules are just that, guest rules. They're all built in. We didn't have to create any of these. And then there's a version six 
uh, flavor of these firewall rules. This is, refers to IPv6. We're going to be using the IPv4 rules. These don't have the V4, but they would be considered V4. So we're going to do stay in here. So we're not messing with any of those for this video. All right, guys. Everything we're going to do is on the LAN. So uh, let me silence my phone so it shuts up. Okay, so here we go. So we're going to create some firewall rules. So the first rule we're going to create is basically a rule that, is, that allows all established and related traffic to talk. And I know that seems confusing, but it basically means if something is meant to talk to each other and has already established communication with it, then it'll continue to allow it to talk with it, okay? So we kind of use it as this catch-all just to make sure that things don't get um, out, of, out of whack here. So for the type of rule, we're going to do a LAN in. Now, there are multiple. There's LAN in, LAN out, and LAN local. We are going to be creating some LAN locals. Uh, we are not going to be creating any LAN out. So basically, this is how the rule is when the rule is executed. And for us, we want the rule to be executed when the traffic comes from a network and tries to go into another network. Basically, there's a firewall right there that says, okay, I'm only going to let you in if you qualify for one of these rules. So all the rules that we're doing are LAN in rules, okay? Other than the LAN local. LAN local means... Um, it's, it's kind of confusing, but the best way I can explain it is, is your Dream Machine Pro, for example, which sees all the VLANs, it's creating all the VLANs, it is, it, 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 it's the router, it is a local device that can kind of see everything. So when you create a LAN local rule, which we're going to do, it basically means that VLAN cannot talk to things like your router. Your, you know, we don't want them to be able to log into your router. You can block IoT to be able to talk to the default network, we can block that, but then the IoT network can still talk to the router because it's it's communicating with the router right now. And so we can actually kind of block that traffic too. We'll, we'll get that here at the end, but that's what LAN local means. So the first one we're gonna do is allow. You can do accept if you want. I like to do all caps, so I know it's a rule I created. Allow, established, and related to any. Okay, we're gonna want we want it before the predefined rules, and I'll explain why that's important here in a minute. And then we're gonna leave the protocol alone. We're gonna basically say we're gonna allow any to any. So right here, any any. You see any any. All ports, all protocols, all traffic, all VLANs, everything. This is on the source. This is the destination. So this is where we're gonna create our rules. This group can talk to this group or this group can't talk to this group, okay? That's kind of how we're doing it. And because this one is only affecting established and related, we need to uh, uh, click this manual and check these two boxes. We're basically saying any can, anything can talk to anything if its state is established and related. And we're gonna say, okay. Now, that rule has been created. If we come in here to land now, you'll see at the top, it, it, it put these, these are the predefined rules it was talking about. It put this before them. So the way this works is your firewall is going to do these rules in order. It's going to just, when some, when traffic wants to come in, it's going to basically just start at the top of its list and say, okay, do you, you meet this one? Okay, nope. Do you meet this one? Okay, this isn't allow. Yep. Okay, you meet that? You can go. You can meet. And if once it allows the traffic to go, it doesn't even go the rest of the way down the list. So it's just going to go down that list until it finds where you qualify. And if it gets down to the third one and says, this is dropped, it's going to block it. So it's the order of these really does matter. And you can actually drag and drop these over here on the, on the left-hand side. Okay. So now we're going to go ahead and create a new rule. Actually, before we do that, for this new rule, this new rule is going to be allow our default network to talk to any internal network anything all of them so instead of leaving this any any we're going to define what any internal network means and we're going to do that in a profile so we're going to come over into our profiles we're going to scroll all the way down and we're going to create a new port or ip group okay and this is going to be i like to call this any internal actually local i usually use the word local any local network or vlan okay so this, is, this, is a, this group of IPs encapsulates all local networks, okay? 
this is going to be an IP group. So we're going to do that IPv4 addresses, and we're going to add whatever ones we want in here. We can add whatever we want uh, as far as IP addresses go. So we're going to clump. We're going to basically make three, and then the three include everything. So the first one we're going to do is a 10.0.0.0 slash .0 .0 eight. Okay. And I'll, I'll, let me get these in here, and then I'll kind of dive into this a little bit more. 16.0.0.12, .0 .0 whoop, not dot .12, slash 12. Okay. And then 192.168.0.0 slash 16. All right. So what does this what does this really mean? So when you have an internal network, when your router hands out an IP address to something that's internal in your network, it is going to use an, an IP subnet like this. It's going to be a 10.1 or a 10.2. It's going to be a 172.16. Dot something. Or in most cases, most of us are a little more familiar with the 192.168 something dot something. So basically what this means is include all of them. Every 10 dot address, every 172.16. address and every 192.168. address that's ever possible. That's ever possible. All of them, include them. That's why this is any local network. And these IP addresses here represent, or these subnets here represent all local networks. So we're going to apply that. Now we have a group that says that includes all of them. So we're going to come back over to our firewall. We're going to create a new LAN rule. Okay. So we're going to go over here, LAN in, just like we talked about. We're going to allow default, and I'm going to say VLAN, so you guys understand it's VLAN network, whatever, to any local. So allow all default VLANs to talk to any local network. So we're going to add it before predefined rules. We're going to accept the traffic. We want to allow this. So this is an accept. We're going to switch this to network. This is where our source, anything coming from the place is our source, the from traffic. This is coming from the default to any place, from to, so the source destination. And then we're going to come down here to our port or IP group, and we're going to change this IP group to any local network, which basically means our default network right here can talk to any of those networks that we created in that port group, any of them, all of them or that IP group, okay? That's because the default VLAN is a trusted network. If we go over here, you can see it is a trusted network. It needs to communicate to all other networks. We're gonna do the same thing with our kids. However, if you don't have a kid's network, you can skip this part, right? So we're gonna go create a new rule. We're gonna create the exact same thing, LAN in. We're going to allow kids VLAN to any local, what did I type last time? Any local, any local. So we'll just do that. Allow kids VLAN to talk to any local network. Okay. Predefined, allow. We're going to change this to network because we want the whole kids network, the whole kids VLAN. We're going to change it from default to kids. And we're going to say port group is any local network. Any port, any local network, anything, the kids network can talk to it. And we're going to apply those changes. So as it stands right now, we really haven't locked anything down. We've created, we everything could talk to everything before, and we just created three more allow statements, which means that my IoT network, there's nothing blocking my IoT network from talking to these other networks. And I can prove it to you right now. This should still be able to ping my local address. And as you can see, it can. It can ping my local address. Okay. So now we're going to create our block rule. And basically what we're doing, we're going to kind of just encapsulate everything with this one. So we're going to create a new rule. We're going to go land in. We're going to say, you can say block, drop, deny, whatever. All local to all local. It's basically with the rule. In, in, our, in our network, we'd say drop any to any. But we're going to drop all local stuff to all local stuff. So in we're going to do it predefined. Same thing. We'll make sure they're in the right order. This time, we're going to drop the traffic. We don't want to allow it. We want to drop it. We're going to go to our port group that we created. Any local network. Port group. Any local network. So any, any, any local network. Any, 
to all local networks. Actually, let's change this. Drop any local to any local. To just keep it, you know, keep it consistent. Okay. So we're going to drop everything in the every IP address that's local that could ever be chosen cannot talk to each other is basically what we're saying. Now, if you create this rule and you put it at the top, you could easily lock yourself out of things and stuff. That's where the order comes into place. That's why we made it fourth instead of first. So we did our allow rules first, and then we created this one. So now if I come in here, you can see it's allow, 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 then drop, right? So basically what that means is, assuming that there's nothing going on in the IoT network, um, the IoT network is going to come in. And it's going to say, "Okay, this doesn't. I don't qualify for this. I don't have any. I don't have any um, anything in here. Um, I'm not the default network, so that rule doesn't apply to me. I'm not the kids network, so that doesn't apply to me. Uh oh, I'm included. To, I'm included in this. My local network is in this group, so it basically means I can't talk to anything but the internet." Okay, that's literally what that means. So now the IoT network should be blocked, and but I should still be able to communicate with it. I'm gonna go and see if I can still ping. Okay, so I can still ping 3.29, which if we go to our client list here, 3.29 was my desktop PC. Obviously, I'm still connected to it. Let's see if it can still ping me. And as you can see, it can't that firewall traffic is being blocked. It's timing out, okay? So we've effectively established these rules right now that says you can't, that it can't, we can talk to it, but it can't talk to us, okay? Let's, we got another device. We got our Sonos uh, on our main network here too. Let's see what the Sonos IP is. So the Sonos is 1.56. Let's see if the desktop PC can ping 1.56. Okay, nope, can't can't ping 1.56. However, this is where we were talking about the local stuff. So the local interface on our um, on our firewall is the 192.168.1.1 or 192.168.2.1. It's the first IP address in there. That's what the VLAN gets when we created those networks, okay? That's what they get. If we go in here, uh, let's go look on there real quick and I'll show you. So if we go into networks, okay, and we look at we look at the I don't know, IoT network, you can see this network is 192.168.3.1. That's the IP address of on the router that the router recognizes to be able to route this traffic. So this is considered a local address. It's considered a local address, just like my kids network is considered to be a local address. 2.1 is a local address. It is not a, it is not a, you know, it's not part of the LAN rules. So if I'm down here on the IoT network, I should be able to ping 1.1. And as you can see, I can. I can get to 1.1, I can get to 2.1, okay? So as you can see, I can still get to the gateways and communicate with the router directly. I can't talk to devices in those networks, but I can talk to the router. That's what we're gonna block next, guys. That's the next part we're getting rid of. So if you just want the rule, the, the IoT to be locked down, but you don't care if it can talk to the router, you can stop right now, just so you know. But if you wanna take your security just another level, guys, listen up, we're gonna keep going. This part won't take super long. All right, so we're gonna go back into our profiles. We're gonna create some groups here. So the first group we're gonna create is a let me see so we're going to do we're going to block this also applies with the guest network the guest network actually can talk to the the local networks too so we're actually going to say this is going to be block not block let's do drop block guest to and the gateway just basically means it's it's the it's the router Okay, we're calling it the gateway. Actually, just to keep it simple and high level to router, we'll call it router. Okay, this is gonna be an IP group and we're gonna add a couple IP addresses. 192.168.1.1. That's one VLAN that we don't wanna talk into. We don't wanna talk into 2.1. So 
So 192.168.2.1, right? Whoops. Gotta go back to that one. I hit enter instead of add. 192.168.2.1. Okay, so that's the kids network router. Add. All right. And now we also don't want our guest network to talk to our IoT uh, router either. So that's 192.168.3.1. Okay. We're going to add that. Okay. So we're going to apply changes. All right. We're going to create another one. So this is block drop IoT to router. Okay. That's going to be another IP group. And basically, we're just including all the other IP addresses except for the IoT's network. So we want 192.168.1.1. Okay, that's the default. We want to add 192.168.2.1. That is our kids network. We don't want it talking to that one. And we want 192.168.99.1. That's the guest network. Whoops, 99.1. Okay. And add that. So this is drop IoT to the router. Basically, all the other router addresses, because even if we added 3.1 in here, it would still be able to communicate with it. But we're going to handle that one, too, uh, here in just a second. So we're going to apply that. All right, we're going to scroll down. We're going to create a couple more. So this one is for the, um, this is the guest router. And we're just basically going to say the guest router is this IP address, 192.168.99. Whoops, 99.1, okay, guest router. We're gonna create a rule that blocks the guest router here in just a second, so we'll apply changes. And then we're gonna create one more IoT router. So this one is called the IoT router or gateway, whatever you wanna say, okay. 192.168.3.1, okay, apply change, whoops. Oh, gotta hit add. Okay, apply changes. So now we have those built in, right? We got all local networks. We have the gateways that are not included in each of our subnets to block those or dropped. I'm going to change this to from block to dropped, dropped. Okay, so just keep things consistent. Okay, so we got drop, drop. So basically the guest network can't talk to the router. The IoT network can't talk to the router. And then the guest can't talk to its own gateway or the IoT can't talk to its own gateway, which I know may be confusing if you don't follow some of this stuff, but trust me, this is going to lock things down and help kind of things run a little bit better and just be more secure. Okay. Just in case you get curious kids. All right. So we're going to go back to our firewall rules. We're going to create a new one. This one is going to be a LAN local. Okay. We talked about the router is local. So we're going to say drop IOT to router. Okay, this is going to not allow the IoT network to talk to any of the other gateways. Okay, we're going to do predefined rules, which is fine. We are going to drop it and we are going to say the source is from the network called IoT. And we're going to say our port group or IP group is going to be to any IoT to the router. Okay, let's make sure I got that right. So basically, this is saying. IoT can't talk to any of the IPs we put in this router list, right? We put a couple IPs in here and we're saying this traffic is all gonna be dropped, okay? Now, before I apply this rule, we talked about on my computer or on, on this one, I could still ping 2.1, okay? I could still ping that, I could ping 1.1, but those IP addresses were included in our list in this block list. So now when I come over here and I apply this, IoT to router, we apply it okay we'll give it a good 30 seconds for things to kick in we'll finish making our rules but i'll show you that you can't ping those ips anymore okay we're going to create a new rule we're going to do the same thing for our guest network so we're going to do a land local okay this is drop guest to router traffic we're going to drop it we're going to say a network which is the guest network cannot get to you guessed it the drop guest to router, All right? Guest to routers. This probably should say routers, plural, but that's okay. Okay, we'll apply that. And if we look in our rules here, we scroll down, the locals are down here, 
right? It, it adds the locals kind of down here at the bottom. Okay, that's okay. It's going to do these rules in order, and it's basically accounting some things in here, but it's going to, these, these rules will be executed. So I'm guessing we should be able to ping 2.1 anymore. There you go. It's blocked, 2.1. I cannot get to the gateway on 2.1. I can't do 1.1 either. Okay, that's also blocked. However, I can do 3.1 because that is my own gateway. I, sh I can get to my own gateway. Crap, which means if I'm on the IoT network and I pull up the internet, I can go to 192.168.3.1 and I can get to my router. Well, we don't want that. We don't want devices to be able to get to the router, right? And we can't block the router because if we block the gateway, then we essentially block our way to get to the internet. But we can block this page. We can block the ability to get to this page. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to say allow all traffic out, but only block the ports required to open this page or, or communicate with our router directly. So that's what we're going to do. Because we can ping it right now. So we're going to come back over here. We're going to create a new profile group, a port group. This, instead of being an IP group, is going to be a port group. So this is our uh, UDM Pro. UDM Pro access ports. Okay, this is going to be a port group, not an IP group. We were always changing it. This is actually going to be a port group because these, it basically means it can talk, but these uh, devices communicate on certain ports, uh, and the ports that required to talk to our device is port 443, port 80, and port 22, which is SSH. SSH. So we're going to basically create that. Okay. So now we can go back into, and I and I hopefully haven't lost you guys. This is this is again some of the downside to creating VLANs is there's a lot to it here, guys. There's a lot to it, right? But if you follow the steps here, you'll be good to go. And I'm going to keep going here because my clock's ticking here. All right, so we're going to do LAN local again. Okay, we're going to block or drop IoT to its own router. Okay, we're going to drop the traffic. We're going to say it's a network rule. We want all of IoT to feel this, get this rule. And we're going to drop anything Oh, we're going to say it to a, a specific um, we want it to be the IoT router. So this is a port IP group that we created earlier, the IoT router. So we want specifically to the IoT can't get to the IoT router and we don't want it on a port. We want it only on these ports. So basically it's saying the IoT network can't talk to the IoT router on these ports. It can it can still get to the internet and still do everything, but it can't talk directly to itself on those ports. We're going to apply changes. We're going to do it real quick with the guest network here. Land local. Okay. Drop guest to its own router. We're going to drop Google's network. We're going to choose the guest network. We're going to choose the port IP group is going to be the guest router, but only on the same ports. Okay. Apply changes. Okay. We'll give it a couple seconds. And that's it, guys. That's all the rules we had to create. Our IoT network can't ping out anywhere. However, I'll show you here real quick. Let me get the um, TV working behind me. So I got an Apple TV behind me, which is on the IoT network for us. Let's make sure this is on the right spot here. Come on, TV. Okay, well, that's loading up. So there's all our rules. You can see the same ones we looked at earlier that might be named a little bit different. Okay, and I'm going to come back over here and I'm going to just hit refresh. And you can see it's just spinning and spinning and spinning. It can't get to it now. And for my next trick, I'm going to show you that the Apple TV here, right behind me, I'm going to make sure my phone, connect my phone to the correct network. So I'm going to, it's going to be correct, connected to here in just a second, the default network. Or actually, I'll, I'll do kids. It's connected to kids here. 
from my phone, find the network. There you go. Wi-Fi for kids. There, you see, could not be reached. So we've successfully blocked that. And then here, if I go into my iPhone and I choose to run my Apple TV, choose a TV, basement, it's connecting. Hopefully it's connecting. We might not have given it long enough. We might not have given it long enough. So uh, real quick, I'll try to reboot this. I know my clock's ticking here. I got to – actually, I'll tell you what. I'm going to pause here, and when we get back, we're just going to do a bunch of testing. So I'll show you how this all, and we'll wrap this up. Okay, here we go. I just wanted to let you know the little technical difficulties we had just a second ago. I haven't changed anything. All the rules are exactly the same. I just think we didn't give it enough time um, for things to kick in. So kind of be patient during this process. Just because the ping doesn't work once, you might wait. Just the rule of thumb is supposed to be like 30 seconds for things to um, for like things to stop working and whatnot. Um, so just you might have to or reboot something. You know, like. You might have to reboot something. So just so you know, um, I didn't change anything to fix what wasn't working just a second ago. I just waited a little longer. That's all it really boiled down to. So in what I want to show you with this, guys, is that things are set up the way we want. So if we go over and look at our clients real quick, all right, we got our Sonos one. Let's talk about Sonos just real quick. Um, oh, here, we'll get to Sonos in just a second. But the, we have the Sonos on the default network. My computer's on the default network. The laptop is. My desktop is on the IoT network. My iPhone is on the default network, which I'm going to show, use that to demonstrate here in a second. And my Apple TV is on the IoT network, right? Okay. Um, we could put one of them on the kids network to show you that it can't get to adult websites. But actually, if you recall, we put the IoT stuff on that as well. And I'm going to prove that works also. So let's start with Sonos. So Sonos is one of those things where... Um, there's a setting in here that these sites use like multicast and all these different types of technology to communicate. So your phone can talk with your Apple TV or AirPlay. I mean, all that thing is taking, uh, that's all taking place using stuff like multicast and some other technologies in place. So if we go into the networks here, you'll see this multicast DNS setting, which basically means I want these networks to be able to talk to each other via this multicast. So IoT, even though we've now we've blocked IoT direct traffic, but we want to be able to the IoT network to be able to communicate back to us on this multicast. Basically, what this allows us to do, and um, I don't have ING, IGMP snooping on here, which plays into this multicast as well. Some people say to turn it on. Some people say to turn it off. I just left it off. So if I'm wrong, leave a comment. Tell me I need to turn it on. Um, but uh, to me, I don't necessarily think it's needed, but I could be wrong. But so with the multicast, we basically still want to be able to have our phone on our main network, our trusted network, and then be able to have that phone communicate with the IoT network you, through multicast to be able to run the Apple TV. So if I click my Apple TV here to wake it up, I want to be able to run that from my phone, okay? That's what that's what this, this setting does. However, Sonos kind of plays by its own rules, guys. It just does. And like I said, there's a whole list of ports and things you can open up if you really want to lock down your Sonos. But guys, I almost have found that it's just pretty much easier to just Put it on one of the trusted networks, whether it's the kids network or the default network, whatever. But Sonos just plays nicer when you have it on the right on the right network. Sorry for my watch. Um, it's just it just plays nicer. OK, so that's what it boils down to. So we put Sonos on one of the trusted networks. Um, if you want to look into that a little deeper, like I mentioned, there are rules you can set. Now, a printer, you can put a printer on any network you want, right? An IoT device will not be able to communicate with the printer if it's on, you know, uh, the kids network or the default network. But if all the other devices will be able to communicate with it, so you're good on printers. You're good on multicasting, which I'm going to show you here in a moment. So my phone 
is on the default network, but my Apple TV is on the IoT network and we can actually control that. So I'm going to go in, first I'll just mirror. And when I do mirror, I can choose basement. And there you go, you can see I'm mirroring, right? So two different networks, cross multiple networks. If I click my little magic remote button here, I can, I'm can. i connected to basement. It, it allows me to check it and connect it. I can scroll up, move around, go to my home screen, hold things in, put all my devices to sleep, whatever I wanna do, kinda cool. So I'm running this on a completely different network. But if it was backwards, it wouldn't work. It only works one way because we allowed the default network to talk to everything. If my phone was on kids, the kids network can still run the Apple TVs. Cool, right? You don't have to give them the special phone or whatever when you guys can't find the remote. This is any device on any of those two trusted networks can run the Apple TV, which works pretty good. Okay, so that's kind of cool. Now, we talked about having a safe network, right? We already showed you that the PC over here cannot ping me, but what can it ping uh, an adult website, right? So let's go into my network. Let's show you here first on the my laptop is click in here so my laptop right here surface is on the default network okay ip config there we go a one dot address and i can ping playboy.com i can ping the famous one pornhub.com right so i can get anywhere i want as long as i'm on this network however and i can show you this on the kids if i if you guys just trust me, it works on the kids too, the same way it works on IoT. If I switch over here to this one, and we do IP config, whoops, type it right. Okay, you can see we have a three dot network. So I'm gonna ping pornhub.com. You can see it can't find it. it. Can't find it at all. If I try to go to that, can't be reached, right? So. It's going to do, it's going to block a lot of the big players. It does a pretty good job of blocking the adult websites, guys. It does a pretty good job. I've been pleased with what it can do. Now, we have, if you see my other videos, we have uh, Firewall of Purple and some other things that you can do to really give you a little bit more granular control, like with your phone. This kind of just is a set it for all family, and it's just going to kind of do it. I can't go in there and add sites and tweak it and stuff like that. It's just kind of putting what it sees as, um, you know, bad sites. So it doesn't give you a ton of control, but it does give you a little bit of peace of mind knowing that they can't get to these, these bad sites. So we got, let's, let's kind of recap here. So we have, if I switch over to my picture here, we have a default network, which is what my laptop's on. It can get to anywhere on the internet and it can get to anywhere on my network locally. Then we have our kids network and our kids network has full access to the local network. It can run the Apple TVs. It can cast their phones to Chromecasts and all sorts of things. Um, it can run Sonos, right? The Sonos was on the default network, but my phone on the kids network can actually run the Sonos. When it's open like that, and you're not blocking any ports, it'll actually communicate and be able to run the Sonos. But once you start putting in firewall rules, it gets a little dicey, okay? So the kids network can run the Sonos. Um, but it can't get anywhere on the internet. It's going to be, it has the safety restrictions turned on. The IoT network is not a trusted network and it can't get anywhere on the internet either because we have family safety turned on. And then our guest network is also blocking, uh, can't get anywhere because it's not trusted. We didn't really test any pinging with the guest network, but it's built the exact same way as the IoT network. Literally the exact same rules are kind of applied actually with one difference in mind because it uses built-in architecture if you remember when we went into the networks and if we click on guest network and choose guest it says your guest hotspot profile will be automatically applied to this guest ne network connected clients will be isolated from each other as well as all internal networks so not only can your guests not talk to the rest of our networks the rest of our vlans if you have two devices on the guest network, normally they can talk to each other, but this actually adds another layer of protection that says they can't. And that's because these devices are used in coffee shops and things like that. And you don't want all your guests in a coffee shop to be able to communicate with each other. That's a security risk. So this is something that it puts in place, an additional layer of security, right? 
and we did not include it in our multicast DNS because I don't want anybody on my guest network being able to run my Apple TV, right? I just don't. Um, even though they wouldn't be able to, I just, again, I just leave it off of that. So that multicast traffic is just avoided. It makes the network run cleaner anyway. So kind of cool, guys. This is what we built. Now, this is what we see as a typical network. Our typical households have laptops and phones and Sonos speakers and and printers and streaming devices, Apple TVs, Chromecasts, smartphones. This is a pretty typical network. And as parents, we typically want our network to be safe. We want to make sure that when I'm on my work computer, I'm on my trusted network and I'm doing a VLAN or a VPN with work or a Zoom call that I'm not being attacked. Now, the one thing I will tell you here, guys, I will tell you when it comes to security. Security can these security rules can only help you so far, right? The weakest link in any network is the guy sitting at the keyboard. So you still, if you're on the default network, you still have to be careful what you click on because the default network has access to everything. These kids also with this particular scenario, because we want them to still be able to run the IoT devices and we want them to be able to still run Sonos, but just not get in too much trouble on the web. But technically, if they get an email and they click on something they're not supposed to, that virus or that thing could still run rampant. So you guys still need to be careful, right? Security happens all over the place. This is just helping devices that are more vulnerable, like a doorbell, like a, a Alexa, like a like an Apple TV, things that are more vulnerable on your network, not be able to create havoc to your trusted areas of your network. So just be careful when you're using your networks, guys. Be careful. Um, don't be clicking on things if you don't trust it. So we live in a dangerous, dangerous world. And so security is almost an illusion nowadays. If someone really wants to get you, they'll get you. And so you still need to be very careful because this doesn't block everything, right? We still need antivirus on our computers. We still need malware protection. We still need spyware protection. We still need to watch what we click if we don't recognize an email. So just kind of keep that in mind, guys, okay? So I'm going to wrap this up. This was already a long one. I know it was. Hopefully you guys hung with me to the end, but literally if you follow this step by step, start to finish, you guys can build yourself a fairly secure and safe network that still allows you to be able to communicate with your devices, but lock down the IoT. I tried to slow it down and explain things in a way that makes sense. I know there's still some technology mumbo jumbo in here, guys, VLANs and gateways and local um, firewall rules. I mean, I know this stuff gets a little confusing. So if you just want to use it as a step-by-step -step guide, you can. Um, I can't even take credit for this, guys. There's guys smarter than me that come up with these rules and help help me establish these things. I'm just passing it along. So, you know, the the actually, I didn't put it up there. I did it earlier, but Crosstalk Solutions uh, is a really good reference for uh, Ubiquity stuff, guys. They're a big Ubiquity house um, they also talk a lot about Starlink and some other things. So guys, if you were learning more and this is just one of the videos you're watching, you can check out Chris over at Crosstalk. Um, he does a good job. Mac Telecom Networks does a lot of ubiquity stuff as well. Um, and Lawrence Systems does a lot. So those are my guys. Those are the guys I, I look to for help when I get stuck on something. So guys, put those uh, feathers in your cap as well. I don't want to take credit for all this stuff. You know, there's people out there much, much smarter than me. But guys, this is a good way of doing it. And uh, hopefully this helps you. And I look forward to seeing you in future videos. So thank you very much. And we'll sign off.